Last time we checked in with you, you were talking about Mike Collins had uh, the leg cramps and sitting down. How, how's he been since then, and, and how would you assess the running back at this stage? Yeah, he's, uh, he's made it through practice consistently since then. Uh, still challenging him. Uh, again, talented, but got to become more detail-oriented. And, and right now, if I had to, uh, Ahmad's been out for a little, with a little bit with, uh, with his knee. Uh, so Paris has actually uh, been the guy that's been uh, – I mean, kind of trying to separate himself uh, by doing the little things, the little things right. Uh, I anticipate that, you know, Mike's going to going going turn it on because he's going to see that uh, the best guy's going to play. And, and, and I told the team and, and told Paris in front of the team that, dude, if you want the job, go take the job. I don't care if you came here as a walk-on. If you're the best guy, then it's going to be your job. And so hopefully that will light a fire uh, in Mike. Uh, we know we're going to need Mike, and I just need him to be his best. In order for us to, to, to establish the run, uh, we're gonna have mul- we got to have multiple guys uh, playing at a playing at a high level, not just uh, not just one. Yeah, Cody Brown. Yeah, Cody. You know, uh, a little little different uh, change of pace uh, coming here. Uh, very talented. Still learning the playbook. Um, still still has to work on the details. Need him to catch the ball a little bit better. Uh, I think a lot of it is everything's just spinning for him right now. New terminology he wasn't here in the spring. Uh, but he's a he's a, a one cut and get downhill kind of guy uh, with uh, uh, with some uh, with some violence behind him. We just got to get him going in the right direction uh, consistently. Tony, you have ended the last couple of practices with the kickers mm-hmm. or the punters going at each other. How how are those two battles shaping? That was good. You know, today was the first day we were able to to punt uh, just because of uh, the weather situation. Uh, you don't want to have a punting competition inside. Uh, so, so this was the first day, but uh, the guys were hitting it. Uh, got some good hang time. Uh, so, so Sparks has definitely uh, increased the competition level at punter. And, and I tell you, we call him little walk off Will. You know, at first I was, I was, uh, I didn't know if I was going to use that uh, that nickname for him. Uh, but I, I tell you what, it looks like he's got he's got pretty good nerves about him. And uh, put put a situation here at the end of practice. Put a put running on the line, treating it like it's a game on the line, 48 yard field goal. Uh, didn't know it was coming, and, uh, and he walked out there and, uh, and he hit it. So, so good competition. Uh, haven't had a chance to go live yet because we haven't had full pads on. So once the bullets are really flying full speed, I'll be anxious to see how they uh, how they perform under the pressure. But we've been trying to create uh, distractions and noise there at the end of practice, uh, just to, to get those guys used to, to kicking under pressure. You know, he's he's look he's looked good so far. Um, he's got he's getting back into his groove, punting the ball, uh, still having to do you know both. Uh, for the for the time being, uh, hopefully uh, with the three of those guys, you know we can we can uh, distribute some of the workload uh, and let those guys maybe maybe uh, hone in a little bit more on one particular uh, aspect of the kicking game. Tony, it looked like Ahern lining up most next to Nick Jackson, mm-hmm. uh, but you got a bunch of guys who played and some some young pieces with Gracie. What do you like? Outside of Nick Jackson, in terms of the inside linebackers, just the just the depth. You got you got a ton of of, of very functional functional depth. Um, Nick is uh, uh, obviously the leader, but Ahern, I tell you what, he's a football player. Um, he's he's communicating better. Uh, he knows how to get lined up. He's a downhill, aggressive kind of guy. Uh, then you got uh, James Jackson was was doing well until he uh, banged up his shoulder a little bit. Uh, he's probably got the the highest upside of uh, of all the guys. Uh, he's a talented, talented young guy. You know, Hunter is uh, is doing well. He's learning that you know he's uh, he's he's not quite as as fast as the other guys uh, to get uh, sideline to sideline, but he's very efficient in the box and he's a bigger guy, more powerful guy. Uh, so so I like the improvement I've seen there. Bracy and, and, and McDonald still uh, still young. Uh, trying to figure everything out, but what I like is the is the functional depth. And uh, if you got if you got six of those guys uh, ready to go, being that we're four two five, uh, I would feel I would feel really good about that. And then moving to Sean Perry, uh, to Will linebacker, and getting him some work uh, there. Probably a more natural position for him, just with his his size and uh, and skill set. But he's still learning um, uh, all the aspects of the position. And then uh, Josh McCarron has come in and, and uh, put some weight on, so he's about two twenty now. Um, so, so he's moving around pretty good. So, biggest thing is I love the, the functional depth that we have. And John's scheme are, are the two inside positions interchangeable, or is there a big difference between what you're asking Nick to do and, and the guy next to him? You know, there's a there's a difference uh, because of uh, all the coverage aspects of, of what you're doing and and, uh, and who has to to relate to three and uh, and different. Uh, uh, coverage combinations, so there's there's a difference, but uh, we're trying to cross train the guys that can uh, that can handle it, so that you got a uh, you got depth and you got flexibility. How has uh, Cam Butler impacted the, the 
He is. Uh, he's worked his way to the front of the line uh, very quickly uh, because he's got a motor. Um, as I said before, he's one of those guys that came in here very intentional. Uh, he's uh, very, very twitchy, and he loves to, he loves to practice. And so what he's done is he's he's up the competition level and, and set the standard for for what uh, game reps look like in practice. How many of those defensive ends and the edge guys are you cross training in, if any? You know, there's a, there's a couple, uh, but you know, there's, it's two different positions because you got the heavy field in, and then you got the banded in to the weak side. And the banded in does more dropping in the coverage, is your weak side rusher, and then the the field in uh, when you uh, when you play your odd structure has to be more of a head up technique, which is a bigger body. Uh, so there's a couple of those guys that are that are cross training, uh, but really trying to get those guys and trying to create a three deep at uh, at each position. Which guy last in the spring you said he's talented as a receiver you had now. Challenge him every day and, and, and coach him uh, the hardest uh, because he sets the standard and, uh, and let him know that, uh, that, that everything matters. And, uh, and he's buying in. You know, he's, he's, buy, he's buying in. He's, uh, he's, a different, he's a different guy from a practice standpoint than, than the spring. Uh, still things that, that he's learning. Um, because it's a new system, uh, there's a lot of different alignments, a lot of different. Uh, he's playing a couple, couple of spots. Um, you know, we're able to move him around by formation so that he's at different spots within the same concept. Uh, he's handling that well. He's practicing fast. Uh, so I've been, I've been pleased uh, so far with, uh, with where he is. Just got to keep him. And I would like to challenge him just from a leadership standpoint and hold the other guys uh, in the room accountable a little bit more. I think he's an offensive coach. How has it been? I know you talked a little bit about the string, but how's it now? Kind of, are you getting more involved defensively with the football? Not as much uh, because fundamentally, offensively, just re really been focusing there, trying to get the fundamentals where they need to be. Help Des, um, you know, help uh, help the other coaches uh, because they're learning a new system. Um, they're they're doing a great job. I'll go in and watch film to to help understand and, and help myself with uh, with questions and what we're doing. Actually, you had to tell them to slow it down just a little bit, man, because they're 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 ahead from an install standpoint. Uh, with uh, especially with all the young offensive linemen that we got, we're we're having to take a, a baby steps at times. With a couple of practices, what is your assessment of the offensive line so far? You know, pleased with the effort. Um, I tell you the, the what we're trying to do on on some of our run schemes. I've seen improvement. Uh, footwork is better. Uh, it's been tough on them because we've had guys with some illnesses up and down, and so we haven't had a chance to to have two practices in a row where we got the same, you know, the the the, uh, the same units out there. So so guys have been have been uh, carrying the load, uh, doing extra. But uh, but I think Leach is uh, is really really progressing. It was good to get uh, Logan back today. Uh, saw some good things out of Justice today. Uh, JP adds, uh, you know, adds some toughness and some depth and, and some competition there. But, but the biggest thing is, is just in fairness to those guys, they haven't had the same five guys line up for two practices in a row, and that's tough, uh, uh, especially when you got uh, so many young ones. But then when your older ones are, are out, uh, it's it's challenging on them. But overall, uh, seeing improvement, so so I like the progress. Just got to continue to challenge those guys, and, and they got they got to strain a little bit more, and we got to get those other guys uh, back into practice, which which we should have this week. Tony, you mentioned uh, with Mike Collins the idea of you just want to get him to turn it on. In your career, do you have a guy that you can compare him to where it was like once you got him there, okay, great, but it took a little <laughs> a little teeth pulling. You game. know, Rob McDowell was a guy that uh, that I had to that I had to get there. Um, he was a guy that played behind Andre Ellington, and so it's different when you when you when you go to practice every day and, and there's a big separation and you know you're the number two guy. So I had to I had to push him to be ready to transition, and he was able to get it his senior year and have a and have a great year. Um, Gallman was a guy that I didn't have to push to turn it loose. I had to push to slow it down, try not to do too much, learn the system. We're trying to do everything by yourself. So each back is a little bit different. You know, Travis was a guy uh, as a freshman that I had to I had to get him to turn it on in pass protection, uh, in different aspects of their game. So they all got some area where they got to they got to improve. Adam Choice, who I have here with uh, with me, he was a guy that I had to get to turn it loose in pass protection. He's very natural as a runner, uh, but in pass protection, it just took him a little while to uh, to turn it on. So uh, so. 
he's gonna he's gonna feel it. This uh, Mike's gonna feel it. This camp because he's just too talented not to uh, not to perform for us uh, at a high level.